Because we can't really see what's going on in an electric circuit, it helps to make conceptual analogies that can guide us in our thinking. These analogies can be helpful, but also dangerous. After all, we are no longer describing the thing itself, but something that behaves in a similar way. It can help to think about electric circuits like the water flow through a system. Just as the word current describes the flow of water in a river, it can also describe the flow of charge in a circuit. We say that the electric potential, or voltage, drops in a circuit, just like we might say a rock drops when we let go of it. So the language is already leading us to some analogy. The most simple circuit you can build consists of a source of electric potential, such as a battery, and a resistive element, such as a light bulb. Wires and switches connect the circuit in a very simple way. We also have included a voltmeter, marked by a V, and an ammeter, marked by an A, to measure voltage and current. In this analogy, the battery is represented by the pump and water tower. The person operating the pump is doing work lifting the water up high. Now gravitational potential energy is stored in the system. This is analogous to the activity of the chemical reactions in the simple cells that make up a real battery, which do work and generate electric potential energy. The light bulb is represented in this analogy by a rotating water wheel attached to a saw. This saw is being used to cut wood. When the water falls and strikes the water wheel, the gravitational potential energy is used to do work in turning the water wheel. Ultimately, this work acts to saw the wood. The water wheel is a good analogy because the water doesn't really have time to speed up as it falls to the ground. It collides with the water wheel over and over, and this prevents it from converting potential energy to kinetic energy directly. Much like a parachute dropped from a great height, the water reaches a kind of terminal velocity due to its collisions with the wheel. Likewise, electrons in a circuit do not appear to accelerate greatly even though they are giving up electric potential energy. They tend to drift, interacting greatly with the positively charged ions that make up the body of the electrical resistor rather than accelerate. In a real circuit, the potential energy is converted to heat energy in a resistor. In the case of a light bulb, this heat energy is sufficient to cause the light bulb filament to increase in temperature and glow visibly. What happens if we put two resistors in series so that all the current passes through one, then the other? This is analogous to stacking two water wheels on top of each other. Notice that at each wheel, the water only drops half as far. Not as much potential is transferred for each wheel, and the energy released will be less for each. At the same time, all the water has to pass through two wheels, which will reduce the total water flow. Remember, this is an analogy and not perfect. The pumper won't pump as fast as a result, and the current is half as much as when there was just a single wheel. What happens if we put two wheels in parallel? Now the same amount of energy is released in each wheel, and the water drops the original distance for both. And twice as much current is flowing, so the pumper has to pump twice as fast. More current is flowing twice as much as before. This parallel configuration is how your household is wired. All the light bulbs in your house are wired pretty much in parallel, so that when you turn on more lights, more current flows into your house from the street. But the lights don't divide the potential, they each get the same amount. Now this analogy isn't perfect. When you begin learning about more complicated circuit elements like capacitors and inductors and diodes and transformers, you might find that the analogy gets a bit stretched. After all, electrons are not water. But the analogy can be a useful set of training wheels when first learning about circuits. We hope you enjoy.